I am Michael Cotter, and I teach English in the Department of English and Foreign Languages at Norfolk State University in Virginia, and I am the director of the writing program. I want to talk about e-portfolios, and uh, it's kind of interesting that uh, this is one of those topics that I think a lot of academics are looking at in terms of how they can bring their students on board um, to make use of e-portfolios other than just looking at rhetorical development and looking at the writing assignment and how they can catalog those assignments so that they can do some review of where they've come from, kind of the value added, how they started, where they ended. But I want to talk about the efficacy of using the e-portfolio for life beyond the academy. And that is to say that the e-portfolio has a couple of purposes. And I kind of like what I heard yesterday in a session. And so what I'm about to add is not really my own, but it certainly mirrors the position that I have about e-portfolios and certainly the kinds of things that I'm teaching my students at Norfolk State. And that is the approach to creating one should be two-pronged. That is to say, it should look both forward and backward. Uh, I picked up that particular bit of information and I, I have to give attribution because we're always teaching our students not to take information without you know attributing the source and so I, I need to say that this comes from uh, a fellow by the name of Keller, a Rod Keller, who is a professor at Brigham Young University and he talked about using the e-portfolio um, as a career objective for faculty members and how in the professional realm we tend to highlight the things that we want people to take note of, the good stuff. But my focus is what about those areas in students' lives that brought them where they are? We tend to tell students, for instance, when they're, they're writing memoir, that basically they're supposed to chronicle the events of their lives in a linear fashion, and nothing can corral truth and projection and reflection, like trying to go back to the earliest beginnings and come forward and to tell one's story. But I like for students to focus on those teachable moments in their lives. And so what I'm suggesting through this is, number one, the e-portfolio should chronicle everything a student does, extracurricular activities. They should focus on music. It should focus on PowerPoint production. It should focus on a student's use of access. It should focus on a student's um, evolution as a student at the institution. That is to say, those influences in his life or her life that have kind of taught them some things about who they are whether they've done service learning activities, civic learning uh, projects in their classes, where they've served as uh, managers of projects uh, because it's an assignment, for instance, like in professional technical writing. These are in-class assignments that is part of, you know, one of the components of teaching professional technical writing to give the students real-world application because when they're writing abstracts and feasibility reports, I really want them to understand why it's necessary to do those things and also so that they can use those in the future because if the only time students are putting together information um, is for the midterm exam and the final examination, I think that has a lot of limitations. What I want to do is to show students the application of the writing that they do beyond the midterm and beyond the final assessments that they get for work done. And so when employers, for instance, are looking at students who are coming out of four-year and two-year institutions, they're asking them questions about work they've done beyond getting a certain GPA and, and the internships that they have garnered for themselves. They really want to know, what else have you done? Who are you? And so with this apprentice project, they become project managers. They become managers of finance. They become kind of a, the interface, if you will, between the university and the community. Um, they become young people who are vested, who are connected, who have kind of a humanitarian approach to life. They realize something about their own altruism because they're doing something that benefits others. And if they can chronicle that in a real way and create portfolios of successes and failures, and it's not just about their, their successes, but it's about what got them there. Um, these are the things that e-portfolios are made of. And what I'd like for students to do is to keep files. Now, I understand that in Pearson, um, they have portfolios, but they do not have 
uh, uploadable files that students can keep and maintain within the platform. And so one of the things that I'm pushing for and I've been talking to representatives about is making sure that this particular platform is hospitable to students keeping those kinds of files where they can upload photos if they're doing dance and it's videotaped those things also can be chronicled because that's part of their history it's not just extracurricular activity that we're talking about but we're talking about all of those things that make the candidate viable for life beyond the institution and so I kinda see the e-portfolio as a personal social register students can basically talk about their interactions with other people and also the interactions they have outside of the institution. I see it as an academic performance timeline. Uh, talk about the value added to their lives. They can actually chronicle where they started, what their work looked like in their freshman year, and then look at the increase in, in the level of improvement in competency and the efficacy of their instruction throughout their tenure at the institution. I see it as an extracurricular activity log. The ePortfolio is supposed to chronicle also those areas of their lives that give meaning to them as young people. Uh, we are preparing them to be articulate, to be critical thinkers, to be readers, and to be writers, but we're also preparing them for a success beyond the institution, beyond the academy. How do they showcase that? And one of the problems I'm finding that that young people have when they're applying for jobs outside of the institution is they have to do this self-assessment and when they're applying to graduate school or they're applying to a job or for a job they're oftentimes asked tell me something about you too often students write about the things that they've done they don't know who they are and so they are not the sum of their activities but what their activities have fashioned them into and if they can just keep a log, it's kind of like you know doing research over a four-year or five-year period. If they can keep activity logs of their own lives, journals, remembering, um, metacognition, thinking about their own thinking, if we can get them plugged into doing this on a regular basis, I think we'll have a product worth investing in and making sure that our students are connected to over the long run. So in short, I'll say that it's, it's about reflecting, it's about activity, and it's about application. And so I would really like for our students to be connected to what their own writing is and how it has significance to their lives. They're not just writing for grades, but they're writing for life, that it's an investment in themselves. And so it really does serve as a kind of reflection slash resume, if you will, over a long period, um, giving those students viability and visibility. I also want to add one other thing, and, and I think this speaks to the heart of what we do in the academy, and that is to teach students, and again, here is a borrow quote, but I think it's applicable, that a person's marketability is in his or her ability to skillfully switch between various discourses. We need to teach students that they can find their voice not only in the rhetorical strategies that we teach in freshman composition, but that they need to find their voices in terms of articulating themselves um, in writing about their own experiences and in capturing those experiences in real time. And again, in those teachable moments when these reflections occur, they don't have to go all the way back to the earliest beginnings to bring us forward but simply to reflect on those things that suggest meaning to their lives and ultimately that shape shapes who they are because that's what character building is all about those teachable moments and building the e-portfolio of course in all of these areas in all of these, these discourses um, even when students are connecting outside of the institution and outside of the country when they're corresponding with people in other countries, it's teaching them cultural politeness or cultural PC awareness. And there's a sensitivity to that because the kind of language that young people use, for instance, in informal settings uh, within the company of their familiars, they tend to be a little bit more relaxed and perhaps not as careful in terms of their discourse. When they're communicating with others, there's a real education going on because they are mindful of what may, what may be offensive to others that perhaps may not be offensive to someone else within their own community. And so those kinds of sensitivity training 
uh, discourses, if you will, and I think that's exactly what they do. They teach us how to be sensitive and how to be aware um, of offense, um, particularly in language. Um, I think that those things are worth noting, and it shows growth and it shows progression. And often too many times we find that our young people are inundated with negative messages when they're watching television or when they're out of the, the earshot of the academic. Uh, we want them to be articulate and mindful and upright and all of those wonderful things that education is supposed to produce in our students. And I think that there are ways that we can chronicle those conversations that students are having, um, whether they're blogging or whether they're just jotting it down in terms of memoir or even in a diary format. It really does show how that student is growing and how he or she is, is moving himself from you know, being the great unwashed uh, to being something that the university can truly be proud of.